Firstly, I would like to thank you for joining us in this first state of the province address of the sixth provincial administration, which takes place right here in Soweto. Our country has just emerged from the six democratic elections, and who will disagree that our democracy is strong and vibrant? Because millions praise the rain and call to cast their votes and choose their public representatives. And the people have indeed spoken without any equivocation. The ANC has a democratic mandate to lead the process of growing out and together. During the election campaign, many citizens exp explicitly expressed their own desire for social justice, equity, and prosperity for all, especially in this province that is relatively wealthy. Madam Speaker, this is the spirit that drove thousands of our people who drafted and ultimately adopted the Freedom Charter in 1955, not far from here, in Clip Town. President Nelson Mandela aptly captured the expectations of the electorate during his first State of the Nation address in 1994, when he said, I quote, the government I have the honor to lead, and I dare say the masses who elected us to serve in this role are inspired by the single vision of creating a people-centered society. And accordingly, the purpose that will drive this government shall be the expansion of frontiers of human fulfillment and the continuous extension of frontiers of freedom. Close quote. Madam Speaker, please allow me to convey my congratulations to the women and men who have been elected to serve as members of the 6th Houghton Provincial Legislature. I trust that we will all join hands and work across political party lines to build a country of our dreams and a province of our dreams. Towards this end, I call on all of us to work together to build a Gauteng province where no one goes to bed hungry, where the economy reflects the full diversity of the population and harnesses the full potential of all the people of our province, where everyone has a job that pays not only a minimum wage, but a living wage, where businesses big and small thrive and prosper, a province where households have access to basic shelter, a piece of land as an asset and decent income, a province where everyone has access to quality health care, where everyone, young and old, has access to the kind of education that unleashes their full potential. Where all residents have access to basic services and basic infrastructure to support their sustainable livelihood. Where everyone feels safe and can walk the streets at any time, including women. Where women enjoy their rights free from all forms of patriarchy where the environment is protected and cared for by us people, where all human settlements promote social cohesion and the integration of our people regardless of race, color, or creed, where citizens take initiatives to improve their own lives, supported by an, a caring activist and developmental state, where there's affordable and reliable public transport that reaches every corner of our province, where there is no racism, no sexism, no xenophobia, no homophobia, where there is no corruption. This is our vision that will underpin the detailed plan to build a Houghton province we can all be proud of. And this this vision will 
inform our plan. That is the plan of growing Houghton together, which is our roadmap to 2030. And this plan will be finalized in the first 100 days of this administration, which means by end of August, after thorough consultation with various sectors of our population. So, in this State of the Province address, I will allow, announce several initiatives that will form the cornerstones and signposts of this plan and give us an indication of where we are heading to. More details will come from MECs with regard to the programs, the specific projects, and the delivery targets and timeframes for each of these initiatives over the next five years. So by September, Madam Speaker, we will unveil the full plan growing Houghton together. So the initiatives I'm announcing today will also give contextual and programmatic effect to the ANC manifesto and the specific priorities and goals announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa during his first State of the Nation address of the Sixth Administration. Madam Speaker, we are acutely aware of the yawning gap between this great vision of the kind of province we want and the daily realities of our people on the ground. We, as a province, are a province of paradoxes. On the one hand, we are a province that is South Africa's largest economy, Africa's seventh largest economy, the 26th largest city region in the world. We occupy a pride of place amongst the largest regional and city economies that have become the engines of global growth and economic development. But on the other hand, this is a province where rising levels of inequality that is inequality with regard to income, ownership of assets, and spatial inequalities are a stubborn feature of. It is here in Gauteng where wealth and opulence exist side by side with acute poverty and hunger. This is the ugly and unacceptable reality that we seek to change. Accordingly, this ANC-led Sixth Administration will focus on the following cluster of priorities. Firstly, we will pay significant attention to the economy in order to create the necessary jobs and bring more people to enjoy a good quality of life. We will, together with that, pay attention to infrastructure development. Secondly, we will pay particular attention to education skills and health. Thirdly, we will pay attention to the development of integrated human settlements and the release of land to many of our people who want to build decent houses for themselves. The fourth area of focus will be safety social cohesion, and food security for vulnerable households. And lastly, we will pay particular attention to the building of a capable, ethical, and developmental state. So these five cluster of priorities will have under each one of them specific initiatives that I will announce and all these initiatives seek to deepen the program of transformation, modernization, and reindustrialization of our city region. So, on the economy, what are we going to do? Firstly, as the engine of South Africa's economy, Kauten needs to do much more to contribute to President Ramaphosa's initiatives 
on economic recovery, investment drive, industrialization, youth employment, and the transformation of township economies. We must take a lead. Over the past five years, we have done a lot in some of these areas. Our economy attracted 199 billion rands in foreign direct investment and created 460,000, 469,000 jobs. I must state that this was a result of joint effort and collaboration between government and various sectors of business, including township enterprises. So I want to highlight some of the results of this collaboration. In the BPO sector, that the economy grew in 2015 from 139,100 jobs to 154,223 jobs in 2018. That's almost 15,000 jobs just in one small sector of our economy, which holds great potential, especially for the youth. In 2015, BMW invested 6 billion rands at its Roslyn plant for the production of the X3 model, creating 1,000 additional jobs. Iveco Larima invested 600 million at its Roslyn plant in 2016, creating another 1,000 new jobs. Ford invested 2 billion in 2016 at its Silverton plant, creating 1,200 new jobs. In April this year, Nissan invested 3 billion rands at its Roslyn plant to expand its manufacturing capacity and add an additional shift, and this created another 1,000 new jobs. Copper Vision invested 420 million in New Dorn Fontaine, creating 300 jobs. Into Food, a local agro-processing company, invested a billion rent at the OR Tambo Industrial Development Zone creating 600 new jobs. And this, this facility was opened in April. FEMSA Manufacturing invested 280 billion, million rents in Ekuruleni, creating 400 new jobs. TMH Holding invested half, half a billion rents to acquire DCD train manufacturing plant in Boxback. And this is a plant that was shutting down where almost 500 workers were facing a bleak future. And this invested, investment has saved 300 jobs. And over the next year, another 200 jobs will be added to ensure that DCD workers who would have faced a bleak future are all back in production. Gibelas Danota train manufacturing opened in Nigel last year, and 1.5 billion rands have already been invested in that facility, creating 1,500 jobs. Madam Speaker, we know that this is for the production of the rolling stock for Prasa and over a decade, and it is anticipated that 50 billion rands will be spent creating another 15,000 new jobs in the next 10 years. So these are the, the examples of the initiatives we have taken over just the five years to help in re-industrialize and boost manufacturing capacity and at the same time create additional jobs. So what are the new investments on the pipeline in this new term of office? The Tswani Automotive Hub is going to see significant investment and job creation in the Gauteng economy through the creation of a special economic zone for the automotive sector. Ford Motor Company, Southern Africa, has just introduced a new shift, and I was at Ford on Friday, where I met 1,200 young workers, half of whom are women, who just started their jobs 
at Ford Motor Company. A major investment is also on the pipeline right there next to Ford at the Silverton Automotive Hub. And we are working with the city of Tswane and national government on this. And it is there that six billion rents is going to be invested, creating additional 2,255 new direct jobs. And in the construction phase, 19,433 jobs. ABN BEF, that is formerly SAB Miller, is also finalizing working with us and the municipality of Mfuleni a huge investment of six billion rands in the Frienerheng town, which will bring an estimated 1,000 new jobs sorely needed in the Citibank economy. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, we held a summit in the West Rand, economic summit in the West Rand, and out of that summit, there's a major initiative between provincial government and the municipalities, together with Sibanya Gold, which has released 30,000 hectares of land. And we are, it is right there that we are building a major facility for the agri-industrial structure sector to boost agro-processing as an important new sector of our economy in the West End. The implementation of the Ekuruleni Eretropolis roadmap is now back on track and gaining new traction. And we are working now with national government, particularly National Treasury and the DTI, and the SOEs such as AXA and the city of Ekuruleni to make the Eretropolis a reality. And the Eretropolis will include the Tambo Springs fuel cell in that industrial park at the Gauteng IDZ. So, Madam Speaker, the rollout of special economic zones in Gauteng will happen. It will happen in Tswane. It will happen in, as is happening already in Ekuruleni. It will happen in the West Rand. It will happen in Sidibeng and it will happen in Johannesburg for different sectors. So these are joint sector-based initiatives that are being spearheaded by all spheres of government. I want to emphasize jointly with national government, the provincial government and municipalities working in a creative partnership with various industry leaders. This is unleashing the potential of our economy to grow and to bring in new players, particularly revitalizing some of our deindustrialized regions, such as Sidibeng and the West Rand, including the decaying towns in those regions. Madam Speaker, over the next five years, we are going to pay particular attention to this idea a great idea of creating Kauteng into a single multi-tier special economic zone. Special economic zones are important policy interventions which boost manufacturing, increase exports, and create not just jobs, but quality jobs in economies where they have succeeded. They also create new industries as we have seen it in Roslyn. They create new ind industries and bring in new suppliers, particularly in our case, black and women suppliers, and link the, them with the value chains of transnational of co corporations, and in this particular case, original equipment manufacturers, OEMs. Given the fact that Africa is moving towards a continent-wide free trade area, Boosting manufacturing capacity in our economy and increasing exports into the various regions and countries of our, our continent is very important. This is part of the vision and the dream that the President spoke about in his first State of the Nation address. 
We in Gauteng are not only talking about this. We are already contributing significantly to inter-Africa trade and investment. More than 200 active foreign direct investment projects of Gauteng-based companies are in different regions of our continent and they are helping to create jobs in those regions, but they are also sustaining 45,000 jobs in the Gauteng economy. And this is important. When we talk about industrialization in Africa, it's not only about creating jobs in our own economies. We must create jobs also in those economies in our continent where our companies, FDIs, is directed at. That's what would, is called mutually beneficial trade and investment. The Chinese call it mutually beneficial. And I see the Chinese ambassador in the audience here. We do need mutually beneficial trade and investment in our own continent. Madam Speaker, the bold initiatives to reindustrialize or industrialize our economy is also an, a contribution to the dream articulated by Pixley Isaka Seme, who in 1906 said the following. The brighter day is rising upon Africa. Already I seem to see her chains dissolved, her desert plains red with harvest, her Abyssinia and her Zululand, the seeds of science and religion, reflecting the glory of the rising sun from the spires of their churches and their universities. Her Congo and her Gambia whitened with commerce, her crowded cities sending forth the harm of business, and all her sons and daughters employed in advancing the victories of peace, far greater and more abiding than the spoils of war." Close quote. This is Pixley Kaseme's dream, and we are moving closer to this dream. In order to drive economic transformation in our province, we will focus on the following key sectors of Gauteng's economy, and these are the sectors that have greatest potential to create employment. Firstly, the automotive, capital equipment, and rolling stock manufacturing cluster together. This is where a lot of activity is coming and a lot of jobs are going to be created. Secondly, the agro-processing, food, beverages, and agribusiness sector. We know that Gauteng is not involved so much in primary agriculture, but agribusiness, agro-processing are key areas of our, our economy where there's more jobs coming and where the potential lies. Thirdly, the BPO or business processing, business process outsourcing, as well as the ICT industry also hold greatest prospects. And it is also here that we have worked with many industry leaders to demonstrate that this sector can absorb more young people. Finance and retail have also been the key drivers of the, of the, the jobs, but they also have a setback from time to time. Many jobs get lost in finance and retail due to technology. Tourism and hospitality is an important sector. We don't have the mountains, we don't have the sea, but we are a business center of our continent. So business tourism, those who are destined, with, destined to go to, to the sea or to, the, to, to Table Mountain or even to the, to the Kruger National Park, arrive here. We want to keep them more here and get them to spend half of the money that they are bringing into our economy here before they go to the sea, to the mountains, and and elsewhere in our country. The creative and cultural industries have been underestimated. We think there's a huge potential for the creative sector in our, in our province. Logistics and warehousing is also a very important sector. And lastly, the green economy, which cuts across many of these sectors. Within 200 days, I will announce the number of jobs each sector will create as part of our target for the next five years. 
This will be done after detailed consultation with industry leaders in each sector, because we don't want to announce targets that have no relationship to the reality. This will also include targets for the number of jobs in the township economy. Madam Speaker, we are quite excited, not only about the big sectors of our economy, but also about what is happening in the township economy. We are excited that some of our groundbreaking work on the township economy is now championed by President Ramaphosa. Now, I don't know what has drawn laughter. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> President Ramaphosa is now the champion of the township economy. We believe more jobs can be created by small and medium-sized businesses in general in our province and that's where the rest of the world is. More jobs are coming from the SMME sector. Given appropriate support and appropriate policy environment, our SMME sector can be key drivers of jobs. Earlier on, I spoke about the big sectors of our economy. That's precisely what we are going to do. We have learned important lessons from supporting township businesses through infrastructure investment, access to markets, as well as procuring goods and services directly from them. And this we did by spending over 20 billion rands in the past five years. But we need new initiatives for unlocking the potential of the township economy. Firstly, we will, we will target and enforce procurement by all our provincial government entities from township businesses to the value of 30% of the Houghton goods and services budget. We didn't quite get there in the last term. We ended at 24%, but 24% was good enough given the fact that this is a new initiative. We will get to 30% in this term. Secondly, we will ensure that all township Businesses and SMMEs contracting with Houghton Provincial Government are paid not just in 30 days, but in 15 days. <laughs> and this we will do by take, we have already introduced e-invoicing. They must be technology savvy. We have already introduced e-invoicing. Through e-invoicing, we will be able to pay them within 15 days or even less. And we don't want the, the, their payment to be sitting on someone's desk where bribes are being extracted and they end up not being paid. Because delay of payment sometimes is because the officials want Jojo. We have to remove them from that. So this public, these businesses must, must interface with no official when they have done their work. They must just load their documents and get paid so that they can grow. We will continue to invest in supportive infrastructure for our township economy, as we have done over the past five years. And that supportive in infrastructure includes the revitalization of industrial parks, building agri-parks and agri-hubs, including markets, markets in our township. Township businesses that are producing goods must have markets where they can sell their goods and services. It must be part of the infrastructure that we create. We will also release land and unutilized buildings to allow those who can create jobs and, and establish businesses in townships to apply for the leasing of this land from provincial government, land and government buildings, from provincial government. 
so that they can start businesses in the townships. And we challenge municipalities to rise to the occasion. The Ekasi labs, which are part of the industrial infrastructure we have built, will be expanded to provide for hot desks with desktops and high-speed broadband in all townships so that young people, particularly young people who want to participate in, in digital trades, can participate in this. And we are linking this with SEP 1 million. We will, together with the taxi industry and our municipalities, transform all taxi rent facilities into vibrant economic nodes in every township. These taxi rents are not just corridors for moving people. They must be centers of business, and that's what we want to do working with the taxi industry. In fact, we want the taxi industry to know that this taxi rank, in fact, were built not just to be owned by government. We want them to be facilities and assets that the taxi industry and taxi organizations operating there can leverage on, leverage on these assets to build the viability of the, lo the local economies. Giving township enterprises, SMMEs, and cooperatives the opportunity Honorable members, we want to give more township businesses and SMMEs op the opportunity to maintain and repair the facilities, including the vehicles of government. Not far from here, at the Soweto Empowerment Zone, there are businesses from Soweto that are repairing our ambulances, that are repairing police vehicles. I saw that on Friday when I visited them. They do top class work, and these are township businesses. We want to give more of them the opportunity to, re to, re to do maintenance and repair of government facilities, including vehicles. We will work with the president who has announced the establishment of the Township Entrepreneurial Fund and the private sector in our province to establish a dedicated innovation fund to support particularly innovation in the township economy. Madam Speaker, to enable the functioning of government interventions in the township economy, to enable all township economies to grow and township businesses to grow, we need a new regulatory regime across the province. Not municipal, each municipality to have its own regulations, or its own bylaws. We need a more enabling and developmental regulatory regime for township businesses and SMMEs to grow. And I want to announce gone are the days where township businesses will be harassed by the police, including the Metro Police, for no, for no reason. As part of the contribution to what I must say on this occasion, Rehaba Ribo tweeted the following advice to me, and I quote Rehaba Ribo. We need more economic development programs in townships and giving young people who can facilitate and encourage their, their own when doing those events, close quote. And I agree with, with Rehaba Ribo. This administration will ensure that we increase procurement from township businesses. But I want to, to put a particular challenge to this legislature. The sixth legislature must work with us immediately over the next 12 months to pass a new law, the Cowden Township Economic Development Act, which will make it easier more affordable and quicker to register, open, and operate a township business. The current bylaws are a nightmare for many. We need a province-wide new law 
which will make it easier for township businesses. And I put this challenge to honorable members of this house. Work with me in the next 12 months to, to ensure this legislature passes a new law to enable the growth of township businesses. <laughs> honorable members, there's another part of the township economy that is hidden. Recent studies by the World Bank and the Institute for Security Studies estimate that more than 14 billion rands is generated out of artisanal mining in South Africa. And this artisanal mining are informal miners, uh, some of whom are involved in what we call illegal mining activity. I am saying Zamazamas. This is a hidden part, a big part of the Gauteng economy, and it is time to surface it and bring it underground and formalize it and create an, a regulatory environment that will make it difficult to break the law and ensure they follow the law, but they are assisted properly. In our country, in our country, illicit mining is huge in many mining areas of our country. But globally, artisanal mining accounts for 100 million artisanal miners compared to 7 million formal jobs in the industrial sector. So globally, 20% of gold and diamond is produced largely by artisanal miners. So, honorable members, we need a fresh approach to dealing with the informal mining sector in our country, and especially here in Gauteng. I want to acknowledge that the EFF has been championing the issue of doing something about artisanal mining. So going forward, we can't keep sending the police. The police get sent to these artisanal miners, and it is a job impossible for the police to do. We are redirecting resources away from policing communities to policing the underground world. And the police have said to me, this is a job very, very difficult to do. So we can't solve this problem by more policing and more policing and more policing. As a deeply affected province, we call for a fresh approach to ensure that we assist artisanal miners to ply their trade in a lawful manner that doesn't pose a threat to communities, to infrastructure, to the environment, and to the formal mining economy. So I want to restate we need a new approach to dealing with artisanal mining. Too many people are dying there underground. Too many difficult things are happening there. Illegal things are happening there. But many of these people want, they want to do formal things and they don't want illegality. We must assist them in this regard. Our province infrastructure faces a serious threat because of ongoing digging and digging in the mining area. Some of the communities like Rivali, serious threats face them because there's digging and digging and digging. The gas pipelines that are running and our other, including our underground water, would seriously be facing a threat of pollution unless we deal with this matter properly. Honorable members, to finalize all our initiatives on the economy, MEC Dr. Ramukhupa will present to the Executive Council in the next 100 days a detailed plan that identifies sector by sector how many jobs we can unleash and how many additional new enterprises can be absorbed, particularly township enterprises, including incubation of the smaller businesses in that. So this is his first job of the first 100 days. That is by the end of August, the plan shall be delivered to the Executive Council on the economy, everything on the economy. 
Dr. Ram Hooper will also table a plan on climate change and sustainability for Gauteng within the first 100 days. Climate change is real. Climate change is a very real threat to many of our people. When there are floods, flash floods in our province, we see that when there are rains, the design of our infrastructure poses very serious problems. A lot of our people just settle everywhere. When there are heavy rains, you see what happens. So we also have a big problem of, of waste. Our, this waste must be turned into a new opportunity, a new economy. So Dr. Ramukhupa, 100 days, I want to see the plan from you. Madam Speaker, Gauteng will also use 60 billion rands of our infrastructure budget to drive an agenda for job creation, spatial transformation, and the empowerment of the previously disadvantaged. We have, over the next five years, an, an, an infrastructure budget of close to 60 billion rands. In particular, this budget will be used to improve the quality of water, sanitation, electricity, housing, and roads in deprived areas, including completing any incomplete project, including those projects in the urban renewal areas of the townships. I will return to this later. We will use this infrastructure budget to create an additional 100,000 jobs. Infrastructure does facilitate job creation. We have seen it. We have experienced it, and with this budget, we will create or facilitate the creation of additional 100,000 jobs in our economy. So that's one area of the job targets, where the jobs are going to come from. We will use this budget to revitalize the regional economies that are not coping, particularly the economies of, the, of Sidibeng and the West Rand. We will have strategic catalytic project, infrastructure projects in those regions to catalyze investment there and crowd in private sector investment. This will also focus on the decaying CBDs in this, including the mining towns that are decaying and the towns that are deindustrializing in Sidibeng uh, will receive our immediate attention through the infrastructure budget. We will use this budget to support the productive side of the township economy, to crowd in private sector investment, to create a more affordable, reliable public transport system that will bring people closer to new economic opportunities across the province. And lastly, we will use this infrastructure budget to, to build a high-speed broadband focusing particularly on deprived areas and ensuring the last mile. Because the private sector in our province is investing hugely on broadband, but this is concentrated largely away from where most of our people live. It's the task of our government. We will work with other private sector partners to take broadband to the townships in particular. So on infrastructure, to achieve all these objectives, I need a plan, and that plan within the first 100 days will be presented by MEC Tasneem Mutara to the, the Premier's Infrastructure Coordinating Committee in the first 100 days. This plan to achieve all these goals with the 60 billion rand budget will be presented to me and the Infrastructure Coordinating Committee within 100 days. So, MEC Mutara, I need a plan from you within 100 days on how we use the infrastructure budget to do all the things that need to be done. Within 12 months, again, using infrastructure, I would like to see huge improvements in the maintenance of existing government buildings, including schools, clinics, and hospitals, and the implementation of Guillermo Honorable Fuchs, the implementation of Guillermo. I got a tweet from you, and I thank you for that, that we must make sure Guillermo is implemented. You know, Honorable Fuchs, you and I can quibble from time to time, but we, 
we also work together on Twitter. On Twitter, we work together very well than in the legislature. Thank you for that sub submission on Twitter about implementing Diyama and the, and the IDMS. So we, we are, that is what the plan is going to deal with. Madam Speaker, many of us travel to different parts of the province, and I have interacted with many citizens who have bitterly complained about the lack of quality of our public transport system and the chaos in our public transport system. We are determined to improve public transport services during this term of office by doing the following. Firstly, we must optimize all the existing public transport modes. The taxis must be optimized and integrated with the buses, with the how train, and I think most decisively with metro rail, a metro rail that must be mo modernized and devolved to be managed at a provincial level. So within the first 100 days, so you don't govern nationally, how can you not allow us? It will, metro rail shall be devolved to the province, the ANC is governing nationally, the Minister of Transport and I and MEC Mamabulo are talking about the devolution of a proper metro rail, and all this will be run by a single transport authority that is already being established in Gauteng province. So, MEC Mamabulo, this is your task now. Within the first 100 days, I need from you a transport service, transport service delivery improvement plan which must be presented to the Executive Council. A transport service delivery improvement plan to optimize and bring together all these different public transport services and ensure that these public transport services reach all the areas of Gauteng. The people of the West Rand say public transport doesn't reach them. We want to optimize that. So your plan must also be able to specifically say with the budget we have, how do we optimize and integrate the public transport system? This is the job we particularly want the Houghton Transport Authority to do. So in 200 days, once the plan is adopted by EXCO, in, in 200 days, I want to take this plan to the National Minister of Transport. So this plan will now be discussed with national government because national government is subsidizing the metros on transport and is subsidizing the provinces. We want national government to know there's one plan for the whole of Gauteng and if it, the sub subsidization must happen, it must be directed at making this plan a reality. So, in addition, MEC Mamabul, in the next 12 months, I want to see specific improvements in five transport nodes which are currently a nightmare. Public transport nodes, such as Mabopani Station, that place is a nightmare. In 12 months, I want to see improvement there. Maraba Start is also a nightmare. There's modern structures there, but the place must be organized properly. Park Station itself is very chaotic. Bree Street Taxi Rank, women get attacked there. Women get attacked there at Bree Street Taxi Rank. Jamiston Station is a big transport node. And I want to add, the Frienegen Taxi Rank must be sorted out so that it can operate optimally and fully because it's the major transport node for the people of the Val. So in your plan, I want to see how we are going to improve these five transport nodes, together with the big thing about where we take Houghton Transport System. Investing in internet connectivity, Madam Speaker, is critical for our administration and the future of our country and our province. Houghton Province refuses to be left behind 
or left out of the fourth industrial revolution. We refuse to be left out of the digital aid, and for this reason we have been investing in wall-to-wall -wall broadband coverage with emphasis on deprived communities. We know, and there are studies to show that investing in connectivity does increase the GDP of that investment destination or location by at least one and a half percent. It also improves our citizen services and service delivery. Investing in internet also creates new industries, particularly the potential to bring in young people into the sector is crucial because youth and technology are second nature. So we are building a smart province, Premier Shilowa. We are continuing on that road, uh, Premier Mtsecha. We are continuing on that road of building a smart province. And some of the work was started by my, by my, my predecessors, such as the building of the Gauteng Innovation Hub. And this, that innovation ecosystem is now being expanded. We are investing in the growth and expansion of the Innovation Hub and drawing in universities and research institutions as well as private sector centers of excellence to create the Gauteng Innovation Ecosystem. And in the townships, we've been building ECASI labs. Those would also be part of our innovation ecosystem. So the future of our economy and the economy of any part of the world that is serious lies in innovation. I want to go back to the dream, Premier Shilowa, the dream of building the Houting Innovation Hub into the Silicon Valley of Africa. That, that is your dream. That is your dream. The Houting Innovation Hub must become the Silicon Valley of Africa. It is, it is in this, it is in the Houting Innovation Hub where we want to make sure Africa, South Africa and Gauteng are a hub for the fourth industrial revolution skills and the digital economy in areas such as artificial intelligence, big data, and cryptocurrency. That is going to happen at the Gauteng Innovation Hub. Accordingly, I am going to appoint a panel that will advise the provincial government on the fourth industrial revolution, and this shall be announced in the first 100 days. So by the end of August, there shall be a panel to advise our government on the, de on the development of innovation ecosystem and how we, we, we take the best opportunities of the fourth industrial revolution. Accordingly, accordingly, Within the first 100 days, let me see Gomura Lehuku, I need a plan from you. I need a plan from you on how we make sure that Gauteng government moves to 100% government services delivered on digital platforms. This is our vision. For us to be a smart province, citizens don't have to be forced to go to some government offices all over wasting their time. They must be able to access government services on their own handsets. So that's the plan I want to do. So how do we make sure we move all public services in Gauteng on digital platforms? That's what I need from you, Emi Sinko, Murali Hoko, within 100 days. And we must demonstrate area by area. We have already started with the licensing. Uh, we want to bring some of the areas in this payment, I've already spoken about payment of service providers. The delivery of education, we are already doing well in that regard, including registration of learners. The healthcare system requires significant investment in, in these technologies to also make it easy for our people to get access to quality healthcare. One of our departments already deploying digital technologies, that's the infrastructure development, to monitor, using drones, to monitor the implementation of infrastructure projects. 
Uh, General Mawela, I want us to use the drones to police and chase criminals. I want the criminals to know that wherever they are, the drones being, being managed by the police in different places, the drones will get there and they, we will get them. <clears throat> So, Madam Speaker, we have to do a lot and we have done a lot to focus on youth unemployment and on youth entrepreneurship. This is a key priority of the sixth administration. We will strengthen SEP 1 million to ensure that we take it closer to the youth in every township. SEP 1 million is not about sitting in some provincial offices of government or in municipal offices. We will take it to municipalities and work with all the sectors we have explained earlier on to make sure young people are given real entrepreneurial and employment opportunities in every corridor and in every township. We have already done a lot to empower and skill more than half a million young people in our province, many of whom have had opportunities to access employment and establish their own businesses. But we need more. We need to do more because in our province, we have, we have close to two million young people who are looking for these opportunities. So in response to the president's call, we will do the following. We will make sure specifically that 250,000 young people are brought into long-term employments in key sectors of our economy. And those sectors of the economy, I've already explained about, about those sectors. That's the plan that MC Ramukhupa is bringing. In each key sector where new jobs are created, half of those jobs must go to young people in each sector, including in the township economy. We will also make sure that our public employment schemes, 50% of all jobs in the public employment schemes are for the youth. And in particular, we are targeting 250,000 young people who will be brought into our public employment schemes to help create skills and enable them to earn some income as part of the transition to proper opportunities. We will also ensure that Government jobs, entry-level jobs of government are, are, are used as opportunities to bring in young people so that the requirement for experience will not be, will not be there in, in, as part of implementing the ANC manifesto resolution. In this province, entry-level jobs and all the new jobs that are coming for every, for every department, the question we must answer is where are the youth? in each of this. Honorable members, we will also do something that we have been doing but increase that level. Through welfare to work, we will reach 100,000 unemployed young women who are currently depending on child support grants as a form of living. We have already done that with 30,000 young people. We have tested the concept, so we will increase the number to 100,000. These young women have shown us that many of them don't really want to be dependent on the grant. They want to work for themselves. Many of them are also running their own small businesses to earn a living and support their children. We will continue to use our program of Tinti Million to skill one million young people in digital skills. And I've seen it during the Youth Month at NASREC during the Youth Expo. I've seen young people there who have spent a day being equipped with digital skills and when they live there they have a certificate and their level of confidence just shoots to the roof. And some of the things they were not able to do yesterday, they are now able to do. And that research points out that every digital skill enhances a young person's employability. We will continue to do this. And lastly, what are we going to do regarding 
our infrastructure programs. Honorable Mutara, government has a tendency to put a tender to everything that needs to be fixed in a school, in a hospital, or in a government building. And that's why these tenders are causing a lot of problems of corruption, and they delay delivery. We want, going forward, we are going to bring in the repair and maintenance of government facilities, including hospitals. Young people will be trained as artisans who will be located in these facilities, and they will do maintenance there. That job does not have to be taken to tender. Those young people will do maintenance and repair of our facilities on the spot. Sometimes it takes four months or even a year to fix a toilet in a government facility because of tenders. <laughs> Young people are ready. They will be equipped with artisan skills and our artisan training program that's part of SEPO 1 million will be increased and that team will be given to you, Honorable Mutara, so that those young people are brought in. The money we used to pay for tenders on some of the repair and maintenance work is now going to be used to bring in young people into proper maintenance and repair jobs. So I want to make a transition now to dealing with the issues of education, the skills revolution, and healthcare. In order to support our transformation, modernization, and reindustrialization program, we have to ensure that our economy has the right level of skills, particularly moving forward into the future. Those should be digital skills. So we need a skills revolution. We need to ensure that our education system prepares young people for the real world of work, and many of them also to build their own enterprises. So entrepreneurship is going to be a big a big part of our education system. So skills development initiatives and educational outcomes must support the transformation of our economy in line with our vision. It must support all the key sectors that Dr. Ramukhupa is going to outline about how many jobs we will have in each sector. Our skills development program must support that. But our skills and educational outcomes must also improve the well-being and the potential of our own residents and citizens and take, take them out of poverty. This is important because States SA has recently provided data that shows that there is a direct relationship or correlation between education, poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Those who have lower levels of education find it more difficult to find jobs, are often trapped in poverty, or find it difficult to escape out of poverty. So education makes a big difference in the lives and the potential of citizens. Educated and skilled individuals have better jobs and better prospects for escaping from poverty. So we have invested a lot as a province in this area of education. And we are on a consistent path to improve our education system, particularly the education for township children. We have built new schools, employed more teachers, and rolled out ICT and other infrastructure, particularly in the deprived communities. We have not narrowed the gap with regard to performance between the suburban schools and the township schools. We are also gearing our education system for the future to meet the demands of the future economy by rolling out schools of specialization, working in partnership with the private sector. The number of schools of specialization will increase from 17 to 35 over the next five years. We will also continue to build schools for, for learners with special educational needs because no learner should be left out because of their background or circumstances of their birth. We want to give opportunities
to all the children of our province. All this we do as part of meeting the goals of the National Development Plan and the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. That is to build an inclusive, equitable, quality education and promote lifelong learning amongst adults. We will invest in early childhood development, focusing on literacy and numeracy in the foundation phases in order to empower learners with portable skills in all our grades. Honorable members, we are doing a lot in our high schools. But going forward, Emi Silisuf, I want us to focus decisively on the primary schools because that is the feeder system. There are many children who get lost in our primary schools in the foundation phases. By the time they come into the high schools, many of them have dropped out and those who get there have very poor skills that they need and to reverse that becomes a big problem. So, MEC Lesufi's other important area of focus and the new initiative is on ensuring that we improve foundation phases, including grade three and grade six, and ensure that in basic education, the STEM subject, the performance on STEM subjects, particularly in primary education, must improve because we end up having many learners right at high primary school level accepting this notion that they are not good in mathematics, sometimes a fallacy that was cultivated in them by some of us in family and teachers who just think you are not good in mathematics. So primary education is going to be a key focus. So what do I want from you, Emi Silisuf? So in the next in the next 100 days, I would like you to present to me, firstly, a report on the status of every primary school in Gauteng. By status, I mean the performance and how every primary school in Gauteng is doing. Because over time, we have been focusing just on the performance and the status of high schools, because all of us are thinking about grade 12 or metric. So now we are going to focus on the status and the performance of every primary school. So in 100 days, Emi Silisufi, the first thing I need is a plan, a report on the status of those. The second thing is, as you have done very well in other areas, I need an improvement plan. Every bad school in our system, primary school in our system over the next five years, how are we going to turn around each of those schools? Very, very important. I would like you every year to publish also, as we release metric results, to release the results of the performance of all primary schools in Kaute. All the parents must see how our primary schools are doing so, so that we can, we can be empowered as citizens to also make decisions not too late when our children are already in high school, when they are still at primary school about which school to take them to. This will improve also transparency, Emi uh, Silisuf. So I want you to therefore identify in that plan, what are the worst primary schools? And you and I are going to focus on visiting all the worst primary schools in the next 12 months. Sorting, firstly, looking at what needs to be done with each one of them to sort them out. So that is the focus and the dispensation on education. Yes, we want to continue to be the number one province in grade 12 results. We, sus we must sustain that position. Emi Silisufi, even this year, we are looking for no position other than number one. And you know, a lot of people who tweeted and said to me, I must take you back to education. They said, look, man, we need that number one position. <laughs> but 
the number one position can only be sustained if the primary schools are doing a good job. Not a once-off thing, it must be something that is strong, a strong foundation in our education system. Madam Speaker, providing quality health care to all residents of our province remain an important area of priority for, the, for our administration. I must point out that our public health care system continues to face a crisis of public confidence. We must fix it urgently because the cost of failure is too ghastly to contemplate. There is a public outcry that some of our hospitals are becoming mortuaries instead of being sanctuaries for saving lives. I want to repeat this. There is an outcry out there that some of our hospitals are becoming mortuaries instead of being sanctuaries for saving lives. And to tackle this problem, honorable members, we need a hands-on approach to focus on every health facility. We need a hands-on approach, a hands-off approach we have learned from life as a demand tra tragedy that a hands-off approach or a distant approach can lead to disaster. We need a hands-on approach, firstly from myself, the MEC, the head of department, and every, every manager and all the employees of each of these institutions should feel part of getting to, the, to, to turn around the performance of these institutions. So we are introducing this a new approach also in healthcare. The focus of healthcare has often been too much, despite the talk about primary healthcare, the focus of our healthcare system continues to be on the big hospitals. We want over the next five years to pay attention to primary healthcare facilities. The functioning of our clinics our community health centers, our district and regional hospitals is critical to improve the quality of care. That's what we are going to do over the next five years. And I want to assure you that I'm going to lead from the front. I will be there. I will be counted. I will be there when we, we go to every poor performing health facility to, to engage also with workers and communities in those areas on turning around the performance of these facilities to give our people the quality of care they deserve. I will go to the, the starting with the five worst performing hospitals that I'm going to mention today. The five worst performing hospitals, I will be there working with Dr. Masuku. What are those five worst performing hospitals? Mamelodi Hospital. Bekimlangeni here in Soweto. Jubilee in Hamanskran. Tambo Memorial in Ekuruleni. Tembisa Hospital. These are some of the worst performing hospitals. The feedback from the public is very bad. So what do I want from you, Dr. Bandile Masuku? In the first 100 days, firstly, I need a health improvement plan for all our primary health care facilities, first and foremost. Over the next 12 months, how do we improve the performance of all our primary health care facilities? Number two, I need a performance improvement plan for the worst, the, these five worst performing uh, hospitals, in particular those that we have visited. I know from you I want to announce that we will have in the first hundred days the filling of all vacancies of CEOs. In fact, all CEOs in, in, the, prov in the province will be appointed within the first hundred days by the department. 
And secondly, all critical posts in our health services will be filled by 2020. Critical posts without which our facilities can perform the task they're expected to do. And thirdly, we, we will also ensure that the, the community health workers constitute the backbone of our primary health care system. And as has already been decided at a national level, community health workers are in the process of being absorbed as the primary backbone of our health care system. But I also want you, Dr. Masuku, to publish the performance of all primary health care facilities on one sheet that the public must know, on a sheet to see what as MEC Lisuf is going to do, the performance of all primary schools, I want you to report to the people of our province, there's the National Office of Standards Compliance, but I want in the province, every six months, you must publish a report that says, this is how our primary health care facilities are doing. The, the citizens must know, and in that we want to see how we who are managing and leading in these areas are doing. So you have a tough job. This will also enhance accountability to citizens. I also want to say, for a while I have raised this issue in the legislature and publicly, that the four central hospitals in Gauteng, which are those, Steve Biko, Charlotte Matlaeke, George Mukari, Chris Hani, those four central hospitals are a national function, and national must take responsibility. We have already been spending a lot of our, on our budget away from focusing on improving the primary health facilities. We have been focusing on four central hospitals, and I want the attention of this provincial administration to be on the primary health health facilities. So the four central hospitals are national facilities. And national government, which this, Dr. Masuku, this I have already raised in 2018 at, at national level. This year we are going to make uh, progress. We will take it up with Dr. Mkiza. I don't want your worry to be, to be the four central hospitals. Let's make healthcare work where it matters most. And we will do that. We also want to ensure that all the 32 CHCs, that's community health clinics in Gauteng, the 32 of them must have 24-hour service because sickness does not have night. We are working with the municipalities, especially the metros. We know some of the metro clinics, they are already expanding services to 24 hours. We want an integrated approach to work with them to ensure that this 24-hour services are expanded to all our citizens. That's very, very important. I want to conclude on health by talking firstly about mental health care. We want to ensure that there's greater attention paid to mental health care uh, in our province. Learning from the tragedy of life as it many we have not been paying attention to mental health care. We need a systematic, comprehensive approach that will ensure that mental health care services are provided on a, in a comprehensive way in all our facilities, particularly in the districts and regional hospitals, where some of at least 10% of the beds in district hospitals will be, will be, will be reserved for mental health care and in regional hospitals, 5% of the beds will be reserved for mental health care. So that is an important intervention because mental health, health is, a, is an issue that affects many, many of our citizens. Depression is common in many families, and many of the, our kids also have pressures that end up leading, leading to they taking their own lives. And those who work depression as a result of issues in workplaces and depression as a result of family and relationship related issues. So there's no household not affected by mental health. 
We've got to treat this and destigmatize it and put this firmly on the agenda. Mental health is a big issue that we must confront. And lastly, with HIV and AIDS, we are going to strengthen our campaign in line with the 1990 target to ensure that 1.1 million people are put on antiretroviral treatment by 2020. Our HIV and AIDS program will target specifically young women because that's where increases on HIV infections are happening. Honorable members, with regard to human settlements and release of land, I want to state that access to decent housing and land is amongst the most pressing issues that our people raised during the election campaign. In this province, Despite the fact that we have built more than 1.2 million government subsidized houses over the past 25 years, this, the backlog is stubborn. And therefore, we have introduced a new approach that combines rapid land release with the mega human settlements. On this question of rapid land release, we have received a lot of positive feedback, and this is one of the most popular policy interventions. And I want to cite some of the submissions made by different people in our province. Jobson Tape made the following comment on Facebook to me, and I quote, just try to allocate land to some of us, just a piece of land. I will build my own house. I don't ask for more, just only that. I will take it from there. This is Jobson. <laughs> Advocate Buwani Chiwarure also sent me the following Facebook message. Please consider allocating land to people who have money to build their own houses. RDP houses cannot be the only solution to housing challenges. Sandra, from the Federation of the Urban Poor, otherwise known as FEDUP, the Federation of the Urban Poor, otherwise known as FEDUP, Sandra tweeted me the following message. And I quote, Fed up are ready in Gauteng with organized communities to implement the people's housing process. Our landlords are ready with savings to embrace the rapid land release program. We need your support. This is fed up. They are not fed up. They are ready. They are ready. I agree with Jobson, Ribuani, and Sandra. And these three debunk this myth among some of us, that South Africans want free things from government and they don't want to do anything for themselves. This is a myth. During the state of the, the last state of the province address, I pointed out as part of the Houghton spirit that many of our people want to do things for themselves. And the rapid land release is a demonstrable example of how our people want government to help give them a helping hand and the rest they'll take forward. So we therefore need action and collaboration between municipalities and the provincial government to achieve the goal of allocating 100,000 service stands to people in the different regions of our province over the next five years. This is the goal I am setting for our administration. 100,000 service sites. We don't want to allocate land without services because that's going to lead to informal settlements. We don't want land to be serviced without, to be given without services. I don't want no more, no more bureaucratic delays, no more explanations. MEC Maile, I'm tired of talking and talking and the Department of Human Settlements giving me explanations and explanations without results. 
So what do I want you to do in the next 100 days? In the first 100 days, I want MEC Maile to present a plan to me and the Executive Council to me first. We have already been discussing it, and that plan will go to the Executive Council on the following. Firstly, concretely, where and when are we going to allocate how many stands? Secondly, the completion of all incomplete projects. Each of these projects in each community where there are housing projects that are incomplete. Secondly, the, alloca 30, the allocation of any unallocated houses. When will that be done? And where are they? The outstanding title deeds. And I know there's a big problem. Some of the townships are not declared and therefore undeclared townships, it makes it difficult to formalize and give people. Working with the municipalities, when can we do, sort out these undeclared townships? And the, the, the urban renewal projects, they are, they are actually five. So in your plan, our plan on bringing, completing this urban renewal projects in the way they were planned. Alexandra, Everton, Clip Town, Bakersdale, and Winterfell. Clip Town never started, actually. Clip Town has been in many speeches of premiers before me. Clip Town renewal. If I go back to Premier Shilowa, now starting with Premier Sekwale, Premier Shilowa, uh, uh, Premier Mutsekha, Premier Mashatile and Premier Mukonyani. Clip Town has always been in each of those beaches. But we did only one industrial area. We didn't do the, the township. So, MEC Maile, I need a plan in 100 days on all that. I will also visit in 100, within 100 days we get the plan. Now, you and I are going to do the following, MEC Maile. We will visit all the five communities. We would have completed the plan to go and report back to them within 200 days. Within 200 days, we will go to all of them to report what the plan of the sixth administration is on each one of them over the next five years to bring them back on track. That's what we do as this administration. That's what we do, and that's what we will do. I want to see significant progress on all these renewal projects, all the incomplete projects. But MEC Maile, I also want, we have hotspots in Gauden, service delivery hotspots in every region, where people are complaining about water, poor refuse removal like in Mfuleni, the roads are not being maintained. All those service delivery hotspots must also be in your plan. And you meet with every municipality on what we must do to address the issues of communities in each of those hotspots. We can't let the municipalities of the hook. They get big budgets from national government to sort out service delivery related issues. So we must work together with our municipalities to ensure clean wa drinking water, clean energy, decent housing, and sanitation. We must also fast track the release of, uh, of land for our businesses, as I've already said. We must work together to respond to the call by faith-based communities, also that they must be included in the land release because they want to build decent places of worship. The, your plan must also include the upgrading of hostels. I am sick and tired of always having to explain why is nothing being done to improve the conditions of our people living in hostels. So the plan will include the upgrading of hostels. And lastly, I want you to talk to the mayors with regard to the housing-related issues on the upgrading of informal settlements. It is the responsibility of the municipalities 
because most of the basic infrastructure they get from the urban development settle, settlement grant. So also talk with the municipalities on all the informal settlements and what is the plan. I also want you to pay attention to mega human settlements. The president spoke about new cities. In this province, we use mega human settlements to unlock the potential of different nodes, and we have many of them already underway. I've reported about them before. Many of them are also, are also making good progress, but I also want those that had been delayed, like the Val River City and Lanceria, and I, the people who have been spearheading this are now saying they are, they are back on track, they have received the necessary municipal approvals, uh, they have funding for these projects. I want us to also focus on those mega projects that are about new economic nodes and post-apartheid cities. In support of the president's vision, we must unlock we must unlock many of them, especially the Val River City and Lanceria were delayed by the absence of land availability agreements between the, the different role players. And these role, this role players are saying to me they are ready to bring back these projects uh, on track. One of the important developments in post-apartheid South Africa is that the townships have expanded a lot through what's called the backyards in our townships. We have a, an, a, a, an interesting research from the Houghton City Region Observatory that shows that the number of backyards, in other words, people in the townships have built, have, have invested in building in their yards more, more for residential purposes. And this research says that from 2001, the number of backyards have increased from 13% to 24%, almost double in, by 2016. And you have to see this. Go to Soweto, go to Olive and Holt, yeah. go to Rivali. You will see it everywhere that people are building. Some are building decent structures, but others are informalizing. They are building shacks inside the art or shacks around the RDP houses. So now what is important, what is important about this is that we are going to work with township residents to look at this as, a, as an important area of what we call the township, the township. This, this is a very important area of the township housing market. So there's township real estate. Many township people are generating income out of the backyards. So we want to work with township residents to ensure that we unlock the value of real estate in our townships. This is very, very important. And this brings me to the, an important issue that here in Soweto, we also largely as a result also of the explosion of the backyards that are connected to the main houses with regard to water and electricity, we have a big problem. Part of the debt problem in Soweto arises from that. I have moved into houses where they say, the elderly people say, look how much I'm paying for electricity, but only to find out that it's because of the consumption in the, in the backyards and the and there's no proper link about who's consuming how much electricity. So as a response to the president's message around ESCOM and payment, I will work with ESCOM and in the VAL work with rainwater, and specifically here in Soweto, with, together with the people of Soweto, to address this issue of the debt. Because the last thing we want is a situation where these institutions just take drastic action and there's no platform to address the problem. So we want to work with the communities in Gauteng where there's an ESCOM debt or rainwater debt. So as the Premier, I will lead this process to facilitate dialogue even with municipalities that are owing ESCOM and rainwater and, and households that are doing that. So we will work with them so that we bring also national government uh, Deputy Minister Pakstawu, we want to bring national government into this. 
to ensure we manage this issue and ensure though there are many people who say to me they want to pay but we need to sort out how they are billed so that we we address the payment of services with regard to safety social cohesion and food security madam speaker there's no doubt that crime continues to be a menace to many law-abiding citizens in our province. In the last state of the province address, I introduced Gen Lieutenant General Elias Mawela, the provincial commissioner, and made a commitment that things are going to change. I made a commitment that things will change. I made a commitment that police visibility is going to increase and police action is going to improve in Gauteng province. The police are now everywhere in Gauteng conducting roadblocks and raids through Operation Okaimulao. Some of you have seen me and the MECs on the road joining anti-crime operations together with the HOD of safety and the provincial commissioner. Since February, 3,000 3, people have been arrested and counterfeit goods to the value of 151 million have been recovered. This includes the arrest of 229 most wanted criminals. I gave General Mawel a target of 20 most wanted criminals he has arrested 229 most wanted criminals, including Vusi Keke in Mamilodi. Vusi Keke is in prison right now. He was harassing the people of Mamilodi left, right, and center. We will get other Vusi Kekes wherever they are in any community in Gaudi. The South African Police Service is working very well with other law enforcement agencies in our province, and they are targeting also the issue of drugs. Fifteen drug laboratories have been closed down. Drugs, including the manufacturing equipment, have been confiscated, and 35 drug kingpins have been arrested since February. <laughs> Honorable members, we will also respond to the call to deal with a particular type of crime. There are people calling themselves business forums who are shutting down construction sites and delaying projects across the province. <laughs> General Mawela is setting up a special team to focus on that. We are going to put to a stop to that type of criminal activity. We want to support genuine business people in the townships when we build projects, build schools, we don't want people who go around collecting money and calling themselves business uh, forums. So Ukai Mulao is working, and to demonstrate this, Murupe Malachi tweeted the following message on Thursday to me. And he said, well done, hashtag Ukai Mulao. These things, meaning drugs, are destroying our society. Ediwa Muhale also tweeted the following. This operation works, and my stolen car was also found in Deep Slot in May. So in this context, what is it we will do to intensify this? We will continue to focus on the 40 priority police stations. Where crime is highest, we want to reduce crime by 50%. But we will also focus on all the police stations, 142 of them. So going forward, General Mawela, this is what I need from you, together with the MEC and the department. The first thing I need is that, in addition to national crime statistics, I want us to report on the performance, integrated comprehensive performance of every police station on priority crimes, including gender-based, Violence. I want a report on every police station. How are they doing in that? The report must also say, are we working, the police working with communities? So the status 
of community policing forums will also be something that we pay attention to. Car hijackings, house and business robberies, drugs, farm murders, as I said, gender-based violence. In these areas, I want a report that says, how is every police station performing on those key areas of crime? Gender-based violence, car jackings, house and business robbery, drugs, and farm murders. And I want to say, working with the Freedom Front Plus, we will focus on this key issue of farm murders. I've made a commitment in the last term, and I'll carry this commitment forward in this term. School safety, MEC Lissoufi, is going to be the Premier's priority. So you and I and MEC Mazubuko, we need to identify the schools in Gauteng where violence, drugs, are destroying our children. And those including schools where our kids get raped in those schools. And you grade those schools around crime. Schools affected mainly by crime. And we must go for them. We must go in the next 12 months, we must go for all those schools where there's this types of crime that is disrupting our schools. And I also want MEC Mazbuko, I want you to deploy 10,000 patrollers in every ward. We have 508 wards in Gauteng. In every ward, I need 10, 10 patrollers in, in each one of them. In every ward, 10 patrollers in every ward. 10, 10, 10, not 10,000. 10, 10, 10. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the correction. 10, not 10,000. So on, on crime, we are, we are everywhere. We are going for the criminals. I know many, many of our people still feel unsafe, but the police are working in Gauteng, and the criminals have nowhere to wait, to, to hide. No, wait. And I want you to see that we are on the ground. You must watch us conducting raids, and I want to invite those who want to jo join the police in action. Join us in action so that you can see we are recovering stolen vehicles and stolen guns. Honorable members, one of the key areas of problem in, a pro in our province is poverty and hunger. In our vision at the beginning of this speech, I say we want to be a province where no one goes to bed hungry. So we want to pull all our anti-poverty interventions to be in an integrated way to target households which are poor. 20% of the households in Gauteng are poor, and many of them go to bed without, without food. We want to bring the indigent policy to target those 20%. We want to bring the school uniform, school nutrition, scholar transport, our food security program, our public employment schemes, the welfare to work, and the dignity packs. All these interventions to help poverty must be directed, and poverty levels are more extreme in the West Rand and Sidi Bang, and in the northern areas of Tswani, especially the Winterfeld area and Hamanskral. We want to target those areas, but we will, we, we will ensure that every household in Gauteng that deserves to be enabled to put bread on the table will be assisted in this regard. And in this regard, we are going to increase our programs, all these programs to ensure that they reach specific numbers that you will find in the speech. We are, we are also reorganizing our social development department to focus on dealing with poverty in the most effective way. So what do I need from you, MEC Tuling Kabinde Kawe, in the next 100 days, I need a plan. I need a plan in the next 100 days that will be presented to cabinet on the measures to reduce poverty and eliminate hunger with very detailed sense of the location and the actual numbers. Where is each household? So that when we take our food packages, we don't take them to families that don't need help. We also have to eliminate fraud and corruption in our programs in social development. 
We have an officials in social development who are really crooks, who the, the food and the staff meant for the poor, they steal from that staff and then they enrich themselves and they end up doing things. We are going for them. Some of them are going through disciplinary action as I speak right now. We will also, social development is also dealing with early childhood development, zero to four. Education is dealing with grade R, four onwards. We will also continue to support our Banabili program in that regard. Social development is going to financially assist 1,700 early childhood centers in the townships because we want to increase the number of children in early childhood development centers by 200,000 from the 480,000 that we have, we have achieved in the last five years. We will also focus on rehabilitation, our, our Kimoja program to assist young people who have fallen into drugs to, to, to reconstruct and rebuild their own lives. Temple One Million will be linked to Kimoja program because it doesn't help to take a young person to a rehab center and when they say they are okay, they are clean, they go back to the township where there's nothing they are doing. They will fall back into drugs again. So we want to help these young people. We will also use, we will also use our, our, the creative industry, which has huge potential, honorable members, to empower more young people and bring them into the necessary jobs. The Houghton Creative Center has an edge. We have many creative industry workers who work here. But over the last few years, we have neglected the creative industry. Going back to the premiers, I know there was a period where the creative industry was doing very well. But over the last decade or so, we have neglected it in Gauteng. KZN and, uh, the East, the, and the Western Cape now have the edge in this sector. I concluded a summit with the creative industry and now there is a plan on the table for, and the roadmap for the creative industry. Our dream is to make Gauteng a hub for, the, uh, for Africa's creative and cultural industries. With regard to sport, we also want Gauteng to be the home of competitive sport in Africa, to attract the best, the best sports players to come and help fix Swallows, Kaiser Chiefs, to come and help fix Swallows, Kaiser Chiefs, and Orlando Pirates, to do as good as Sundowns is doing. So what do I need from you, MEC Tope? In the next, next 100 days, I need a plan from you on how we implement the resolutions of the creative industries in Daba. The, the people in the sector must see that we are serious. It wasn't just a talk shop. So the plan, you must present it to the Executive Council in the next, in the next within 100 days, in the first 100 days, on how we make Houghton the, the home and the hub of this industry. Again, in the, next, in the next six months now, we are done with the creative industry. I want you and I, Emi Simbali Trope, to meet with the sporting fraternity in Houghton. We also need a plan from all sporting federations in Gauteng. Sport has the potential to empower our youth, to get them out of wrong things that they are doing, but we must do so with a plan. We need the Gauteng sports plan to make Gauteng more competitive with regard to sporting, but to get more young people in our communities, in our schools to be involved in sport. So what are we going to do? The first thing in that plan, I want us to focus on school sport. School sport must be the focus. Secondly, I want us to focus on community games. How do we bring more activities, sporting activities, and improve the sporting facilities of all our communities in Houghton? That must be in the plan. By when, what can we do when? I also want us to regionalize the premier social cohesion games. These games have been very popular. We must take them to every region of our province and bring in private sector partnership in this regard. 
Madam Speaker, I want to conclude this State of the Province address by focusing on no small measure. That is building the capacity of our state to implement all these plans. That is to build a capable and ethical and a developmental state. We need a state that can provide leadership and stewardship and ethical leadership across society. Because without that, these plans will just be a pipe dream. They will be sitting there. There will be no, nothing done about it. So the initiatives I've tabled before this house and to the people of our beautiful province will not happen by osmosis, as they always say. They will not happen by themselves. And I want to say to you, honorable members, I've been in government now for a while. This is not my first term. One of the things I have come to know is that things don't happen quickly in government. And sometimes there is the art of making things not happen. Sometimes they don't happen at fast enough. At other times you meet and meet and meet and talk and talk and talk, but things don't happen. Senior officials who are here, the heads of departments and the director general. Things don't happen quick enough, and at times they don't just happen. And there are officials who have developed the art of making things not to happen. I want officials who are going to demonstrate the ability for execution, getting things done the ability to get things done. And I'm going to instill discipline in terms of execution. Chairperson of the NCOP, former mayor of Johannesburg, Honorable Masondo, gave me a book a few years ago. That book is called The Art of Execution. Or oh, the discipline, no, the discipline of execution. Somebody else gave me a book called The Art of Execution. And another book about how to make government work in a way that satisfied citizens. I bought myself that book. In this term, we will be no friends with officials who don't get things done. And I already know, I already know heads of departments in the past five years who have not gotten things done fast enough. There will be consequences, and that has already started. There is also another important thing. Sometimes things get done, but they get done in a wrong way. They get done, but there's corruption when things are done. I don't want officials who say, we get things done, but corruption happens. I want things to be done in a clean way. Things must be done, and the, the work must be done in a clean way. You, I have I fired three heads of departments in the, past three, in the past five years. Three heads of departments I have fired in this. So anyone who Anyone who doesn't understand government, like someone's right next to me here, <laughs> Honorable Mashir, who doesn't understand what is government, So over the next five years, we are going to continue with our clean governance agenda. There will be no compromise on clean governance. I want things done rightly quickly, but they must be done, and they must be done on the basis of clean governance. We are going to continue to improve our clean audits. We are going to continue to improve that. We have, we have implemented our, we have now passed the open tender system. It's going to be a law. It will be rolled out. 
We are also awaiting President Cyril Ramaphosa because he has established a multidisciplinary team that is going to do lifestyle audits across government. I am waiting for that team that will do lifestyle. My team, Team Gauteng, is ready. Team Gauteng is ready to do lifestyle audits. Team Gauteng is ready. The ANC caucus is ready on lifestyle audits. We are going to do, but the whole, every, everyone in the legislature must be willing to subject themselves to lifestyle audits. <laughs> Honorable members, we, in the past five years, some of you don't know this, we have imposed stringent measures on, on cost containment in Houghton province. We have imposed stringent measures on cost containment. I can tell this House that housing MECs, are, there's no MEC who is getting a new car. Whichever car was there being driven by an MEC before, all the MECs are using those cars. Until the car reaches its full life cycle, it will not be replaced. So all the vehicles will only be replacing a vehicle that has reached its full life cycle. And I can tell you, I drive some of the oldest cars that were driven by some of these premiers. I drive some of the oldest. I got them there. I asked my team, can this car be fixed? I still drive it. It must only be replaced when it, is, it has reached its full life cycle. But I also want government to buy cars that are made in the Gauteng economy. These cars, because the cars made in the Gauteng economy are sustaining employment. Uh, MEC what Transport, Mamabulo, Kulobe, you and G Fleet must make sure that any vehicle we procure is the vehicles made in the South African economy first not assembled. We are now talking about made with significant local content. What BMW is doing, what Ford is doing, what Nissan is doing, those investments are bringing in lot, lots of local content. I want to see you driving these cars that are made here. MPs, you must drive cars made in South Africa, in the South African economy to support the workers. And these cars, of course, don't have to be expensive cars. I must add, they don't have to be expensive cars. You don't want to buy a car made in the South African economy? That's your problem. We will do it. That's so typical. You speak something else, but do another. So through Ntirisano, we are going to extend Ntirisano. Now let me say to you, MECs, you are not going to be found in your offices. MECs, you are not going to be found. We will use only one day to do administrative work necessary in government, and the rest of the week we will be on the ground in clinics, in hospitals, in schools fixing. On the, in the streets fighting criminals for the rest of, and we will be in townships sorting out service delivery. Our time will be in townships through Ntiresan. Ntiresan is not only, is no longer going to be a one month thing or a one week thing. It is, a, it is a seven day affair. Unless when we are in the legislature, we will be on the ground in communities sorting out problems. This is how this, that's what it means to be an activist government. We have tested it, we know it works, we know what to do. We are not experimenting in this regard. I also want to say something very important. We have noticed that our delivery model have neglected some of the erstwhile, erstwhile Indian townships or so-called colored townships have been ignored or neglected in service delivery. I make a commitment to these communities today. Every infrastructure MEC, so we have a steering committee on infrastructure. 
And MEC Maile, you are going to monitor this, make sure this happens. Every infrastructure MEC must bring a plan on what we are going to do to improve the look and feel of the erstwhile Indian and colored townships in Gauteng. Every, every key infrastructure department, education and health, I want you to answer the question and policing, what are we going to do to improve service delivery also in these townships? This is a commitment we are making, and in 12 months, I want to see some progress in each of this. With regard to sports as well, I want a plan that shows on social cohesion and sports. How do we take young people in these communities out of the things that may destroy their own lives? So therefore, don't look for MECs in their offices. If you want to meet me, let's meet in a township where I'm busy solving a problem there. I have appointed a younger, more energetic team which combines some experience from elsewhere or inside with better education. And this is, my, this is the new team, Haute. Younger, more energetic, and I can tell you, we are younger. We are younger. We are younger. There's no one who is, who is 55 years and above. We, the youth, we, the youth in this cabinet. The youngest, the youngest are two, they are 36 years of age, and the next one is 39 years, the others is 43, 44, several of them, and then we, the older youth, are 50, 50, 51, 52. We are just the older youth, around 50 there but we are the youth nonetheless. So I want energy from this team. They must be everywhere, every day, every hour. There's no sleeping time. When there's a problem, they must be there. This is what we want from this team. It's more, they must deploy their youthful energy to solve the problems of our people. So I will sign performance and delivery agreements at the end of September with all the MECs on all these plans I say they must bring in the next day, by within 100 days, I'm going to sign performance agreements with them. The first 12 months, what we want to see. The next 33 years, what we want to see. And by end of five years, what do we want to see? And I'm going to make this performance contract public. Yes, MECs. They must be known about the commitments we have made, and we will meet every eight weeks to do what we call delivery audit with them. And H H I will meet every MEC and HOD within every eight week cycle to do a delivery audit assessment with them. I also want to say there are there's work we have not done well. We have not supported some of the sectors very well. Women, I want to see in the fifth admin, sixth administration, more work to support women, especially those facing gender-based violence, more work to mainstream women into the economy. We also want to support senior citizens, people with disability, military veterans, and members of the LGBTI community in Gaute. So on crime and corruption, what have we learned in the past five years? We are integrated, we, we will now have a more integrated approach of the work of the Ethics Advisory Council and the Special Investigation Unit and the Integrity Management Unit in the Premier's Office. The work that Treasury needs to do around in forensic investigations. We often had problems with quality issues there, the work that the SIU is doing, and the work that the, the integrity management unit is doing in the premier's office will be more integrated so that we can stop corruption where it is happening. And there are particular departments that are more prone to corruption. And all the outstanding cases given to the 
Special Investigation Unit will be concluded this term. Our province is an urban province that has got complex urban challenges and municipalities play a very, very big role in this regard. Provincial government must work with local government to improve the lives of our people. And I want to take this opportunity to commend the municipalities in Gauteng for their unqualified aud audits. All Gauteng municipalities obtained unqualified audits. All of them unqualified audits 100%. That first and Midval got a clean audit. That's the only municipality that got a full, clean audit. Uh, you know the mayor of Midval, I, I hope he is here. Uh, the mayor of Midval, I want to make you my advisor on clean audits. How you get the clean audits done. Uh, Ekuruleni, you have done lots of improvement. I was listening to you, mayor, this morning, uh, talking on, uh, on Power FM. You're getting some things right, but we need improvements. Despite this unqualified audits, municipalities in Gauteng are facing trouble. This is the reality. You can get clean audits, but if you don't deliver services, you are getting nowhere. We must get clean audits and we must deliver. Don't, don't think this, you do one thing and not the other. So one of the things I want to say is that Many of our municipalities are doing well, in the West End and Sidibeng in particular, but also the big metros are really struggling in many areas of compliance and service delivery. So what am I saying about local government? In the past, in the past five years, and in particular from six, 2016, we were treating very, very carefully because we were also managing issues around different political parties. And I want to say that that era has ended now. Treating carefully does not bring results in the performance of local government. We must go and ensure that municipalities that don't do work are put on 100% administration because the people are suffering. Treating carefully and softly and I particularly want to say I've been talking to the, the new Premier of the Western Cape to understand some of the things they are doing. The Western Cape has done well in ensuring that when there are problems in municipalities, they go there. I want to use the Western Cape model. When the Western Cape, when municipalities have problems, they move there, whether it's ANC or DA municipalities. The provincial government moves in to intervene. You are going to see the same. Uzo Shuba. This thing of treating carefully, no, they will say they are DA, or the ANC people will say it's a faction, treat carefully, all these ones will say, no, you are dealing with them because of party politics or factional affiliation. That has come to an end with immediate effect. When there are problems in municipalities, we will move in there. Whether it's Johannesburg or Tswani or Ekuruleni or Mfuleni or, or, or Midval, I leave you. Or oh, Midval. We will intervene there decisively to bring back service delivery in those municipalities. So, MEC Maile, I expect you to be on the ground every day. I want you to be on the ball there every day. Those who politicize things when we intervene, even in the ANC, that time has come to an end. When a municipality is not doing work, we will intervene. In the DA, when your municipality is not doing work, we'll intervene. Stop telling us about politics, this, politics, that's being targeted. The people are suffering here. Siabangena. <laughs> There's no municipality of a party. Municipalities belong to the people. I also want to say that I have met with traditional leaders in Gauteng. 
I've met many traditional leaders here in Kauten. Bayete. Bayete Ngonyam. I've met with many of them. Many of them say they, uh, they belong to traditional houses. But you know, the big problem is how do they prove that they are? They really belong to royal houses. And when I meet with them, that's the question I ask them. Now, it mustn't be me who decide about, I like this one, Chief Bwota, I like you, uh, Hosi Kekan, I like you. It must not be me. What will we do, MC Maile? In the next 100 days, we will set up a panel to do a verification of all traditional, all those who claim that they are traditional leaders in Gauteng. Because many of them also are calling for the house of traditional leaders in Gauteng. But we can't bring a, a group of people who are not confirmed. So that, that, that will be done in the next 100 days. It's a commitment I made to traditional leaders, and that shall, that shall be the law of, of our government. So I want to conclude by saying that something that I know, if I don't say it, then my speech will be incomplete, the issue of e-tolls. <laughs> Firstly, our position has not changed on e-tolls. It wasn't for elections, it wasn't for elections, the e-tolls have no future in Gauteng. It wasn't for elections, they have no future in Gauteng. It was not for elections, it is something we believe in. Our position has not changed, but you know, you know the truth. This matter is in the hands of national government. Now, listen to me. Uh, now I have a Minister of Transport who's called Fia Fokol. The, me and the Minister of Transport, me and the Minister of Transport have been talking about how to take forward the work of the President on the e -tolls. You will see, you will see there's going to be significant movement on this matter. Because I want to insist there is no turning back on the issue of e -tolls. There's no turning back on this matter. I also want to say, we as the provincial government, we as the provincial government, we are prepared to put some money where our mouth is. In order to deal with the debt, we are prepared as the provincial government of Haute to show how serious we are on this matter. So we are prepared to put to make a contribution to set to dealing with the debt on the e tolls. This is how serious we are as the provincial government. Not hundred days. I'm meeting with Minister Mbalula today. You are waiting for 100 days. I'm meeting with Minister Mbalula today. You are waiting for 100 days. I am meeting with Minister Mbalula today. You are waiting for 100 days. So finally, finally, let me take this opportunity to thank the people of our province for electing the ANC as the governing party in Gauteng. Thank you, thank you, thank you, the people of Gauteng, Sianbonga, Akensa, Rodivuanga Manda. We thank you very, very much. I want to I want to also say I'm deeply indebted to the ANC and my family for giving me time, space, and the opportunity to serve the people of our province. Because this is something something I truly love and truly enjoy, just to serve. I am grateful that we have a new team, Team Gauteng, and in the administration, the Director General of our province and the senior officials, I'm grateful to you all, from all our departments, especially those officials who are doing very good work, who are ethical, who are, who are committed. I thank you. We wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for you. You must know our dream is to expand 
the, the fulfillment of the, to expand the, the frontiers of human fulfillment and extend the frontiers of freedom. That is our dream. Our dream is to ensure that the well-being of our people take pre a preeminence over anything else. And I say in this term, I say to all of you, we will and want to get thing, more things done during this term. We will not allow anything or anyone to stand on the way to growing out and together. God bless Africa. God bless South Africa. And God bless Gauteng. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.